today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the Diamond Select Toys, Marvel Selects, Iron Man, the Hulkbuster. The Special Collector's Edition figure, uh, relatively new. Spot didn't get a chance to review it earlier, but this is also a Disney Store exclusive. Spin around the side of the box, and we got some artwork for the Hulkbuster Iron Man. And spin around the back. Though no read-up, you get a very towering image of the actual figure www.diamondselecttoys.com is your destination if you want to check out some other cool, hot Marvel figures and collectibles. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, though, we're going to get a better look at the Hulkbuster Iron Man. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. The Hulkbuster Iron Man out of packaging is a very stunning looking piece. In fact, the one thing that I like so much about the piece is its coloring. The vibrant... It's almost like a cranberry red that they've used with the gold. And as opposed to giving them just a matte paint, they opted instead to give us this shiny metallic treatment. And the end result looks very impressive. Uh, sadly, Spot does not have his Marvel Legends Hulkbuster figure that I can do the comparisons on the two. Uh, he, I, he is packed away somewhere. I'm not really sure whereabouts I've put him. But the figure here, if I can do like a comparison to maybe like another Marvel... Legends figure, one of my new favorites. There he is next to Scarlet Spider. I don't know if I would say that I like this particular figure over the likes of the Hulkbuster build a figure. That was a really phenomenal figure. This one, I kind of, when I look at it, the first thing I think of, I feel as if it's an upgraded version to the original Toy Biz Hulkbuster Iron Man, which very similar in design. It's very different, though, from the Marvel Legends treatment. The Marvel Legends treatment had a very distinct separate headpiece, the torso, and everything else seemed very separate from one another, whereas Hulkbuster here is very self-contained, especially his head. His head, from what I can see, has no movement to it, unless I, it's just really, really stiff. I can't seem to get the head to actually move on the piece. Uh, as for posability, one problem I have with the figure is that when you move the arms a certain way, if you move them too far up, and I've already had this happen a couple of times, these torso, the uh, shoulder pieces, while they are on ball joint, they will pop off. I've had this now happen about three times uh, while I was playing around with the figure. The shoulder pads just pop off. They do snap into place easy enough, but uh, there is really no way to kind of fix that problem. You move the arm too far up, see right there, you can kind of see where this shoulder piece will pop itself right off. It's also a very misleading figure in the sense that the areas such as his hands, the way that his hands are sculpted, and by the way, I also got a little bit of paint on mine, that no foolin' actually has a fingerprint on it. It's like somebody had actually, it got wet, somebody put their finger against it and left a fingerprint. But with this one hand, it's misleading because the way it's socketed, it's sculpted in a way that you would think it's ball, it's ball jointed, like individual finger articulation. It does not have finger articulation, nor does it have thumb articulation. It's sculpted this way. So don't be trying to force it. If you force it, something bad is probably likely gonna happen to you. And not to you, at least, or to the more so to the, the Hulkbuster. The other hand is extended out where you can see its reactor blast coming up from its hand. That's also a good way to display the figure too. Um, it's a, like again, it's a good looking figure. There's the back of it with a little thruster uh, with the exhaust ports, I guess on the tops. It's a little bit of silver. It does a good job of breaking up all the red and the gold. But I don't know if I would say I'm wowed by the figure. And I, I normally I'm so super crazy when it comes to Marvel Select figures. He also has a bit of a problem standing, and that's really only just due to the fact I haven't got him standing in just the right position. He's a good figure, but again, I feel like he's an elevated version of the Toy Biz Marvel, well, the Marvel Legends Hulkbuster Iron Man. He was part of the, like, the heroic riders or the legendary riders. He came with, like, a really ridiculous surfboard kind of hoverboard thing. That figure... A little more bulkier. It could actually open its cockpit as well, whereas this one could not. This one actually is just uh, just sculpted in piece. I think by the comparisons of it, 
I feel like the Hulkbuster from the Build a Figure Wave, in my personal opinion, I think is a better looking Hulkbuster versus this one. But it's nothing to take away from this particular figure. This figure is good for all intents of reasons. The paint especially is very rich, super detailed. But again, I just think I like the other one a little bit more. Just, just a little bit more. When it comes to Hulkbuster's posability, again, it doesn't look like his head can move. Uh, you can't even get your fingers really in there to start moving stuff. His arms are on hinge sockets, but again, watch when you move it that you don't accidentally pop the shoulder plates off. He has a hinge elbow, which I found extremely stiff on these pieces. Ah, there we go. He does rotate also at the forearm, and he does also rotate at the hand. The upper torso is on its own independent ball joint, which at least that's good because, you know, you while you can't seem to, again, fight, maybe I can loosen up the head. It doesn't seem like it wants to move though. At least I can kind of compensate that with the, with the shoulder or with the torso movement. He has no waist swivel whatsoever. However, his legs do hinge forward and back. I will say though, moving the legs too much I wonder if this is, you can see right here, it's starting to scrape or wear the gold paint away. So that's something that you might wanna be just factoring in when you start moving the legs too much. Finally, he does have a bend in the knee, which also allows the lower leg to rotate. And he's also got a pivot point in the foot. Things that this figure does extremely well, again, he's big, he's bulky as a Hulkbuster really should be. The colors are very rich in detail with the cranberry red, that really solid gold and the silver accents all really give you a fully finished, fully realized Hulkbuster. You also have the weight to it that Diamond Select always delivers when it comes to their larger pieces. But I feel just at the end of the day, it's not a bad figure, but I feel like I kind of like the Hulkbuster from the Build-A-Figure line instead. Just he just had a little bit more going on to him. He seemed to have a little more posability options than this guy. But I think if you really want to go back and get an upgraded version to the original Hulkbuster from the Toy Biz eras, I would say this is a, a far superior upgrade to that original figure, though he didn't have the canopy that opened and you couldn't get couldn't see Tony Stark inside. I think this is a great update to that figure. It's just not one of my favorite Hulkbusters. Today's Toy Spot, we were having a look at the Diamond Select, Marvel Select, Hulk Buster, Iron Man. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more Toy Spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.